I want you to imagine the last book you read. Can you recall the main characters, plot points, or lessons learned? How about the programming project you completed last month? Can you still remember every detail of your research? If you had to build a similar project today, how many of those algorithms and code implementations would you have to look up again because you don't remember how to do it? Well, today's your lucky day because I've solved this equation. From the books I read to the lessons I learned from my experiences, I've discovered within myself the unorthodox method that I've habitually used all my life to remember almost everything. This method is not taught in schools. Hell, I bet many of y'all will call me crazy for doing it. And I don't blame you because it is kind of crazy. It involves stepping out of your comfort zone. Good, 22! Who's gonna carry the boats and the logs? Daring to slow down in a fast-paced world and seeing the magic that lies within our memories. I'm going to tell you a story about Abraham Lincoln that I bet you won't forget anytime soon. When Abraham Lincoln was but 23 years old, he served as captain in the Black Hawk War. An old Indian named Jack appeared at his camp. He showed a paper signed by General Lewis Cass stating he was a good and true man. But some of Lincoln's men wanted to kill him. One said, we have come out to fight the Indians and by God we intend to do so. As tempers flared and rifles rose, Lincoln stepped between Jack and his men. Another man spoke sternly to Lincoln. This is cowardly on your part, Lincoln. Lincoln replied that if any man thinks I am a coward, let him test it. His words silenced the men in his company and saved Jack's life. If that isn't one of the most badass lines I've ever heard, I don't know what is. I tell you this story, even though you're gonna forget it, because it's one of the many things I tell my brother Kyle while I'm reading this book. These book darts represent the others. I throw these in whenever I get that feeling like I should. And it's typically these things that I want to remember. And what I do is bother the hell out of Kyle. Oh yeah, did you know he used to be called the rail splitter when he wasn't called Honest Abe? Speaking of heat, Abraham Lincoln was a bit of a hothead in his younger years. Man, they used to be real self-sufficient back in the day. I'm trying to get back to that. But luckily for me, Kyle's always interested in learning new things. He's a big reader, not me. I just read a little bit. But what I read, just like with the lessons I learn, I want to remember. That's why my brother's probably heard me tell that story three or four times, along with the many others in the book. Not only do I enjoy the conversation, but it helps me remember. But how do I remember it well enough to tell them? This part may be where you consider me a little crazy. I do this weird thing of talking to myself as if I were having a conversation about the topic at hand. This conversation I have in my head or oftentimes out loud, explaining it and telling the story, which always introduces questions that I think they might ask. So I then have to do further research so I can answer the questions that they just asked, then start the conversation over again. Why I started doing this? I have no idea. I've just always done it. It's what I found to be most helpful in trying to remember something. Simple as that. This is a reason why I don't read self-help books, but instead read biographies and other nonfiction storybooks to learn from the person's actual story, taking an event from someone's life and deciphering how they overcame it, what they learned from it, and asking myself what I do in that situation. It helps me understand the overarching idea. I've found that self-help books do most of that work for me. Therefore, I won't be able to have that same experience that allows me to truly understand and remember it. That's not me bashing self-help books, just giving my experience what works best for me. As a matter of fact, I still find value in self-help books. I just don't read them all the way through. Also due to the fact, I just don't find them that interesting. So when I am interested in or recommended a book like that, I just read the short form. And if I like the short form, I'll read the book. Which just as a disclaimer, none of what I stated in this video was a way to fit short form into it, even though they are the sponsor of this portion of this video. Everything I said are my honest thoughts. I don't even think they want me to say that I use self-help books as a replacement. Not always a replacement. Again, if I like it, I'll, I'll buy the book. I just saw an amazing opportunity to segue short form right here, which is why I included them in this video in particular. I genuinely use and enjoy short form and definitely recommend it. Short form is the best way to learn ideas from all those books you've always wanted to read. And it has an array of book topics, not just self-help, but books in business, science, politics, technology, and the list goes on. Short form not only provides a one-page summary of the book, but breaks down each chapter, giving you the most important aspects of each and tying in similar concepts taught in one book to other books teaching the same thing. 
But again, this doesn't serve as a replacement to reading the whole book. If I read something in short form that piques my interest, then I'll read the book. Or if I've already read a book, and there's something I wanna remember, a concept, a lesson, then I'll read the short form. They work very well together. If that's your kind of thing, hit the link in the video description. You'll receive a free trial as well as a 20% discount. That's shortform.com slash forest. Again, it's a really great platform that I use and genuinely recommend. That unorthodox approach I take to remembering everything, notice how I said I have multiple conversations in my head, then more conversations, this time real conversations with my brother, it's called repetitions. The more I do it, the better I get. The better I get, the better I remember it. I've been playing around on the piano for the first time in two decades. Unfortunately, I remember nothing about what I used to know. What keys are what notes, how to read sheet music, nothing. So I've just been looking at random little tutorials like this and play it. The first try is pitiful. I'll get maybe three or four notes. Then I'll start over again, do them again, maybe some future parts of the song to later tie them in. And what I have is something like this. next day, I come back and play it again, but this time I don't even need to reference the video but one or two times. I'm playing it fairly well. The day after that, even better, so on and so forth. I'm putting in those reps to improve each and every go. And supposedly, the most effective way to go about this for memorization and long-term retention is something called spaced repetitions. It can be traced back to Hermann Ebbinghaus, a 19th century German psychologist. As one of the first to conduct a systematic analysis of memory, his discoveries led him to formulate something called the forgetting curve. It shows that memory retention decreases exponentially over time unless the information is reviewed or used. In the mid 20th century, cognitive psychologists expanded on Ebbinghaus's work and developed the concept of spaced repetitions as a practical application of the forgetting curve principle. That is, a learning technique that involves repeating the study of material at increasing intervals over a period of time, spaced repetitions. For example, let's say you want to learn the concept of recursion in programming. On day one, you learn its definition and see some basic examples. You practice writing a recursive function. The very next day, you review the concept and try to implement the same function from before without looking at your previous code. You come back a couple days later, review the concept again, only this time trying to solve a more complex problem that requires recursion. Now a week goes by. You revisit the recursion concept, implement the more complex function again, and try to solve a new, even more complex problem, so on and so forth, increasing the amount of time between each session. I have personally found value in space repetition, so much so that I included it in Studious, our newly launched Notion template for students to organize their entire student life. And yeah, I know, I did it again, but these segues are just so clean. I'm talking about space repetition, something that I have included in my student Notion template, I just can't help myself sometimes. If you're a student whose thoughts and schedule and things are always up in the air or scattered throughout your notes app and your notebook, Go to notionstudent.com to organize your studies with Studious and learn more about it there. We got a video to make. Two things we've discussed here today, my unorthodox approach of how I have conversations with myself and then with real people to make me remember and spaced repetition. I find so much value in each, but I think utilizing these two things in tandem would be the most effective way to remember everything. Everything you want to remember, that is. So I highly encourage you Try each of these things separately, see how they work, then try them in tandem to see if they work for you. Because at the end of the day, I'm only one man, sharing what I learn as I go through this thing we call life. Typically in the realm of computer science and software engineering on this YouTube channel, but other times more broad, like this topic, which can also be applied to computer science and software engineering. All in hopes that it can help you on your journey. All right, let's see if I can get this right. I have this video in case you want to know why I code for four hour blocks with no breaks. A video here on my kind of unnerving thoughts on how I think AI will affect the software development industry, not just the software industry. Or maybe you'll like this video here because that's the one that YouTube thinks you will like the most. That's all I have for today. Y'all have a good one.